Okay, 4.4, Earth's atmosphere. First, we have some cool pictures of clouds. Very interesting. Look how cool those are. Then we had a video about Felix Baumgartner's, at the time, world record jump. It has since been broken by Alan Eustace of Google. First, we're going to talk about the structure of the Earth's atmosphere, how it's laid out, what it's made of. The first thing, what the atmosphere is. The atmosphere is one of the Earth's four kind of life support systems. It's divided into these spheres. You have the atmosphere, which is all of the gases. You have the geosphere, which is all of the solid material, all of the rocks and sediment and such. You have the biosphere, which is all of the living stuff. And then you have the hydrosphere, which is all of the water, whether that's solids, liquids, or gases. All of the water. The atmosphere are all of the gases. That's what we're concerned about. And these spheres are not mutually exclusive. You don't pick one and that's the one you're, you belong to. They interact all the time. For instance, water vapor is both part of the hydrosphere and the atmosphere. The importance of the atmosphere. Why do we care? The atmosphere provides oxygen for critters like us that go through cellular respiration. And it provides carbon dioxide for the autotrophs. Good times. It absorbs solar radiation. It absorbs enough that our, we are not super cold like Mars, but not too much like Venus. So we have that nice temperature where it's possible for uh, liquid water, which is what we need for life. It moderates climate. It has a pretty high specific heat, so it doesn't change temperature very quickly. Unlike in space, where depending if you are in view of the sun's rays or not, you can vary in temperature a couple of hundred degrees. On Earth, not so much. We have atmospheric pressure. This is the weight of the air that's above you. Thinking about it, uh, the regular ocean, it's just this big pool of water. That's essentially what the atmosphere is, but of air instead of water. It's this ocean of air, and we're at the bottom, and atmospheric pressure is just caused by the weight of all that air above us being pulled down by gravity. Now, air is not very heavy, it doesn't have a lot of mass, so it doesn't feel like much, but really it's about eight pounds. Okay, now the formula for pressure is weight times area. The area is the column of air from the surface, from whatever surface you're measuring, to the top of the atmosphere, so the very edges of the exosphere. And then this picture is pretty basic, but it does a very good job explaining. If you were at sea level, your altitude is zero, your air pressure would be the weight of all of these oxygen dots above you. Well, atmosphere dots. If you were to increase your altitude, you're still taking up the same area, but now your air pressure is less because there's less, uh, there's fewer air dots pushing down on you, well, being pulled down on top of you. The relationship between altitude and pressure. As you increase altitude, pressure decreases. It is an inversely proportional relationship. That's what this statement is showing. Altitude is directly proportional to 1 over pressure. Or, altitude is inversely proportional to pressure. As one increases, the other decreases. Over here we have our little graph of that. It's showing that atmospheric pressure here on the x-axis is decreasing as the y-axis, altitude, is increasing. There's a steady decline. Uh, that's why your ears pop when you're in an airplane and it ascends or descends. The pressure inside your body is not equal to the cabin, which is not equal to the atmosphere around it. And then here we have a neat picture of sealed snack bags. What happens is they're packaged and sealed, usually somewhere near sea level. So the air inside is at a certain pressure, but then when you drive them up a mountain and there's less air pressure, the pressure inside the bags is still pushing out, but it's not being pushed in with the same strength that it was when it was sealed, so they puff out. And if you go high enough, like in the video we watched, the bags will pop. Composition of the atmosphere, what it's made of. We have permanent gases and variable gases. For the permanent gases, we have nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen is the most abundant, it's the most common. It makes up 78-ish percent of the atmosphere. Oxygen, the part that we actually use, is about 21 percent. 
all the other noble gases are make up a little less than 1%. Then we have our variable gases. These change. Humans have impacts on these. We have water vapor, which is between 0 and 4% of the air, depending on humidity. Carbon dioxide, which is around 350 parts per million, which parts per million seems pretty low, but 200 years ago at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, atmospheric carbon dioxide was closer to 270 parts per million. So there's been a 33%-ish increase in only 200 years, which is way too fast. That's why climate change is such an issue. Methane is about two parts per million, and then we have ozone, which is 40 parts per billion. Quick note on ozone, there are two types of ozone. There's atmospheric, uh, stratospheric, and tropospheric. Stratospheric ozone is the good stuff. When people say save the ozone layer, that's what they're talking about. Tropospheric ozone is a secondary pollutant caused by interactions with uh, sunlight and industrial pollutants. Uh, it exists in the troposphere, the lowest layer where we live, and it aggravates respiratory issues. Layers of the atmosphere, good segue. We have here the Earth's surface, then we have troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere. Starting from the Earth, moving towards space is troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere. Make sure you know them in order. And then what parameter is used to define these layers? Temperature. Temperature changes with altitude. So does pressure. Now, whereas pressure is a steady decrease as you increase altitude, temperature is a little more complicated. Temperature both increases and decreases depending on which layer of the atmosphere you are in. As you increase altitude through the troposphere, the lowest layer, pressure continuously decreases, but temperature is also decreasing. Then you reach the stratosphere, where temperature is going to increase. In the mesosphere, temperature decreases again. And then in the thermosphere, the prefix thermo means hot. So in the thermosphere, temperature goes up, and it goes up significantly. If you look over here, it's 1750 Celsius. It's quite warm. In between those layers where that temperature transition it switches from increasing to decreasing are the pauses. Between the troposphere and the stratosphere, you have the tropopause. Between the stratosphere and the mesosphere, you have the stratopause. Etc. Those are the areas where the temperature change is paused. It's not increasing or decreasing anymore. It's switching from increase to decrease. Then we have this. The notes for this are posted in the description and in Google Classroom. One more chart showing that temperature decreases through the troposphere, stays the same in the tropopause, increases through the stratosphere, stays the same in stratopause, decreases in mesosphere, stays the same in the mesopause, and then increases in the thermosphere. But the entire time, pressure is decreasing. Now the reasons for that. In the tropopause, as you increase altitude, air pressure decreases. So those mo air molecules are further apart. They're not transferring heat as effectively anymore. In the stratosphere, temperature increases because that's where the ozone layer is, and ozone is very good at trapping heat. In the mesosphere, you've lost that ozone, so you've lost that insulating factor so it gets colder again. And then in the thermosphere, the Earth's the radiation from the sun hasn't been absorbed, deflected, or reflected by other layers of the atmosphere. So the thermosphere is absorbing lots of energy from the sun. It just feels cold because the air molecules are so far apart that they're not transferring heat very well. Uh, there's not enough medium for that heat to tra uh, travel through.